what can you say? Is coronavirus an act of God? Uh, well, yes, brother, it, coronavirus, uh, God is not taken by surprise by coronavirus. Um, uh, when you say an act of God, there, there is a sense in which everything is, is, is an act of God, but God overrules uh, everything, he knows what he's doing. Um, it, 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 I, I, I could say a lot more. I, I, it's slightly off the subject of our, of our, of our topic. Um, but God is not taken by surprise by these things. Um, coronavirus is a dreadful thing, but we live in a fallen world. And um, sometimes these things are here to teach us. I, I really, really had, uh, I hope you don't think this is the wrong thing. I, I had really hoped that when this coronavirus had struck, it might have caused some of us in the West, many of the people in the West to turn to God again. Why did God send the flood? Why did God send judgments on the world? Always there is a remedial sense behind it. The tragedy in Britain, I don't know about America or the other parts of the world, but in Britain, it seems to have hardened people's hearts against the Lord even more. So that we have our politicians have dismissed any sense of calling upon God. And, uh, they, they, you know, they think that we who are Christians are, are, are mad. Uh, they're trying to silence us. We're being no platformed. Have you heard that expression? We're being no platformed. We're being um, attacked at the moment um, uh, for standing up for truth and righteousness. And uh, um, I, I'm just, I, I thought the, the, the fear of death and many people fear death uh, from coronavirus. I thought that would have caused people to call upon the Lord. It hasn't happened. Um, and I just wonder what else the Lord will do to our wicked, wicked nation and land to bring us to our senses. But that's a, that's a topic for another time. Uh, Pastor, how would you define the term covenant? Uh, is it an agreement or relationship? Um, my friend, that comes in. Let me find the schedule. What did I do with the schedule? That will come very soon. I'm not going to do that now because that will come very soon. In fact, it comes in the next, the next lecture. It begins to come in the next lecture. I will define in detail uh, the whole matter of covenant and how the whole matter of agreement and relationship and how it all ties together. Um, and I've got a diagram that I'm going to do. I, I will need to talk to Glenn because that day I will need to share my screen, I think. But I, I haven't quite worked out how to do it. I may be able to fix up a board behind here and, and, and draw it, but I, it might be easier to, sh I'll see. Um, I've got to work that out this week. So uh, thank you for the question. It's a good question, um, but we will be answering it later. In the creation, did God create the evil also? <laughs> that of course is the, the, the great, uh, that is the great question, isn't it? Um, did God create evil? No, God did not create evil. God permitted evil. Um, the devil fell uh, in the heavens. We have that. We have accounts of that. In uh, I, this is a very quick answer, and it, it, I'm not trying to trivialize it, dear brother. Please, I'm not trying to trivialize it. Um, it's a very important question, um, but we need to understand uh, the nature of evil, um, and we need to think through how we interpret that and explain it. Um, the devil fell. The devil wanted to be like God. Uh, the devil tried to usurp the authority of God. We read that, about that in Ezekiel and in, um, in other passages of the, of the Old Testament uh, and in references in, in Revelation and in other um, apocalyptic um, literature. And he was cast out of heaven uh, because, uh, because of his sin. Um, and um, uh, he is the one uh, we, we need to think about that in that context. Um, please, that, that, that is a much longer question. And I, I feel I've been a bit trivial, but, but um, it is an important question and we need to think about that. Um, but, um, do we need also to consider in this study other world views? Um, um, uh, Joseph Winthrop, <coughs> Joseph, my friend, I'm not I'm not quite sure what you're referring to in other world views. Um, we are just, we we are looking at the Bible's world view and God's God's um, revelation to us. Um, um, 
you know, the, the Hindus have a worldview, the Muslims have a worldview, but it's very, very different from ours. I'm, I'm not sure that we really are, are here to talk about that in detail. Um, if you want me to, um, <coughs> maybe I can refer to that a little bit, but it's, it's not really particularly relevant to what we're doing here. Um, we, it is, it is uh, as a private matter, as a personal matter, as a pastor, it is good to study <coughs> other worldviews. And I, I, have, I have studied a lot of religions in the world, Hinduism, Buddhism, and others for some of my uh, academic um, um, training. And it's worth knowing them because it enables us to answer them and to give biblical answers. <coughs> what can you do about the translation? Yeah, I create evil. Yeah. Uh, well, again, um, we're nearly at the end of the of the time now. Uh, yeah. Um, yes. Um, there is a sense in which everything is under God's control. Um, I, I, yeah. Let let me let me let me. I, I'm not. I don't want to rush that. Let let me let me let me perhaps come back um, and say something a little bit more about that uh, on another occasion. It's a very important question. <coughs> Um, in fact, I'm, I'm actually going to write it down so that I don't forget, uh, because it will be good. To, I, I can just make a mention of that. Um, um, let me, let's do it now. Right. What is the difference between Adamic administration and a david uh, again we will come to that uh, in more detail next time because i will begin to talk about that and show the relationship between the covenants whoa, 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 whoa. <coughs> Yeah, well, you see that, that, uh, yeah, thank you. I, I hope you can read the chat, friends. Um, he's talking about the seed of the woman. Um, uh, yeah, the, 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 that is why, where the perfection of God uh, and the glory of God comes in. God does something with Mary in a way that doesn't happen with any, with any, other, with, with any other conception. Um, and he, you know, he supernaturally implants into Mary uh, the seed uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ, so that he would be born, uh, so that he will be born without sin. That is, the, that is the whole point and the significance of that. Now, of course, the Jews, even in our Lord's day, didn't accept that, because in John's gospel, uh, they accused him of being born of fornication. Well, he wasn't. Uh, this was the supernatural intervention of God. And that is why, although Mary was a sinner, it was not um, it, it was it was a supernatural intervention of God, um, and uh, again I could say a lot more about that. It, we we will go into the the whole use of the words um, uh, Alma in the Hebrew in in um, Isaiah six when it says a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, uh, and uh, the word for virgin there is the Hebrew word Alma, which is not the is specifically the word for a a, a woman of marriageable age. But it, it is specifically different, and it's always used in the Old Testament of a virgin. Um, although sometimes I know in Hebrew Alma can be used of a married woman, but um, but uh, it is um, it is um, uh, it, that is why Matthew is perfectly right to use the Greek word parthenos, which means virgin. Um, this was something uniquely special because God had uh, God had implanted um, uh, into Mary's womb. Uh, that which would bring forth the Savior as the sinless Son of God. Uh, that, I, sorry, I can't go into all the medical, uh, but I think that's, uh, hopefully that will give you some things to think about. Um, uh, Stuart Olliott has got an excellent uh, book on, uh, on the incarnation. Uh, it'll be worth, little, little paperback, well worth reading. <coughs> I think we need to stop because uh, um, friends need to uh, come I think I think you have Hebrew.